afternoon I'm down at the Black Man here at just in front of the Inst and opposite Jury's Inn and this is the historic assembly buildings where the Presbyterian uh, assembly meet and apparently there's a exhibition, new exhibition in here as regards the history of Presbyterianism. This is quite an iconic building to begin with. A lot of date on it 1905. So let's go in and have a wee look. Just come uh, off the foyer there into the uh, Presbyterian Church Visitor Exhibition that's just been opened about a month ago and this is a permanent exhibition so and it's free so you just dander in off the street into the assembly buildings in Fisherwick Place here and this um, exhibition tells the story of uh, the Presbyterian Church in Ireland over the last four centuries. It uh, talks about the work of the Presbyterian Church at home with its 500 plus congregations and it tells about the work of the Presbyterian Church overseas and it gives you um, a bit of the history. Now this exhibition wouldn't have come about on, uh, without the uh, good help of the Belfast City Council. I see how I've got a timeline. 1600 Presbyterianism arrived in Ulster with the the Ulster, well not with the Ulster Scots, with the Scots during the plantation of Ulster in the 1600s and they settled about all over the province but mostly in Antrim and Down 1625 some Presbyterian ministers served in Church of Ireland parishes and in 1625 their preaching led to a religious revival in Six Mile Water 1630 Church of Ireland bishops began to remove Presbyterian ministers from their parishes, 1642. Following the Great Rebellion, 1641, when the native Irish rose against the settlers, a Scottish army came to Ulster and in 1642 found, formed a presbytery or church body at Carrickfergus. So this is the first formal, um, I don't know, formal setting for the uh, Presbyterian church in Ireland. Presbyterian Church became established as a separate Protestant denomination, and of course these were um, these uh, planters were um, reformed, and they followed uh, the teachings and uh, example of people like John Calvin and John Knox. And we've got a board here that gives the beliefs and organisation of the church. Presbyterianism is a system of church government. It owes much to John Calvin, 1509 to 64, the Genevan reformer. There's no hierarchy, instead, there's a system of courts, each made up of ministers and elders elected by the people. The New Testament word presbyter means elder. Congregations. Each congregation is governed by a Kirk session. 1926 women have been ordained as elders and serve in all courts of the church. The first female minister, Ruth Patterson, uh, was ordained in 1976. Beliefs, doctrines of the ancient uh, Creeds is the includes the Trinity, the Virgin Birth, Death and the Cross of Christ, Resurrection, Second Coming of Jesus, the Only Son of God. Basically, it's the Westminster Confession of Faith. Uh, these include the supreme authority of the Bible, justification by grace through faith alone, and the priesthood of all believers. And there's the Apostles' Creed that is prominent as well. number of beliefs so much to Calvin, such a sovereignty of God who calls people to follow Christ and Jesus Christ is the sole king and head of the church. 
and this is all summed up, as I said there, in the Westminster Confession of Faith, which is 1647, and the ministers subscribe to that. There's Jerusalem Chamber, Westminster Abbey, where the Westminster Confession of Faith was drawn up. And there's a bust or sculpture of founding father John Knox. And this is an interacti interactive zone. Explore alternative 1886 map travel through five centuries of stories watch an independent people's video reel meet presbyterian personalities visit interactive church directories let's have a look top screen to interact right let's go for it uh, presbyterians of historical note let's have a look john knox Robert Blair, Francis McAmey, Reverend James McGregor. Any more? William Steele Dixon, Mary Ann McCracken, and Jean Carlyle, Hen Dr. Henry Cook, Dr. John Edgar, Dr. James Glasgow, Isabel Todd, Dr. John Moore Sims. Amy Carmichael, W.P. Nicholson, Reverend Dr. W.F. Marshall, Helen Waddell, Professor Ernst Davy, T.S. Mooney, Dr. Ray Davy, OBA. I think he was, uh, what was he? He did, I uh, can't remember. <laughs> anyway, and I'm not up there. That's a shame. And there's a map of Ireland, north and south, giving the numbers of Presbyterian churches in those particular areas. Well, we're talking about congregations there. Presbyterian Church in Lectern, and of course, um, prominently displayed is the Burning Bush. You'll find these Burning Bush um, Symbols everywhere in the Presbyterian Church. <laughs> Hourglass, often placed on the pulpit, but not to restrict the sermon's length, rather to ensure that full value was given. Many ministers simply turned it over and continued. Very good. Oh, who's this old boy? And oh, who's this boy? This boy is, oh, Reverend Dr. Henry Cook and he is the famous black man and I have videoed his statue outside in front of uh, Inst. It's just outside, where is it? The black man. There, there he is. But you maybe not be able to see it through these latticed windows. If I can home in on it. In front of the church, ah, there it is. That's the black man, even though he's green. And this is him here. And he's buried up at Stockman's Lane. Right. Influence and mission overseas. 18th century, over 100,000 Irish Presbyterians emigrated to America. They went to a for a variety of reasons, poor harvest, increased rents, and desire for more freedom. They played a major part in the struggle for American independence. People like Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett and, and the Alamo and all the rest of it were all, um, a, lot, a stack of them were Ulster Protestants, Presbyterians. And so many American presidents can trace their uh, ancestors, grandfathers, and all the rest of it, to Ulster. So it's talking about early missions, missions to China, and they sent out female missionaries as well. 
And here's Susan Brown, became the first woman missionary to India in 1874, promoting Christianity amongst the women of the East. It must have been a daunting task. The second half of the 20th century overseas mission has expanded. 2000 today. And there's missionary workers found in all arts and parts of the globe. And they just don't uh, preach at people that they provide uh, clean drinking water, housing, education, um, all sorts of uh, agricultural help, planting and all the rest of them. good practice. What's this? Model of a church in Western India. As a missionary box. Oh, that's the missionary box. Passport, Luke's Gospel, Chinese Inkwell. There's various artifacts here. And we've got various other artifacts about here. There's a pitch pipe, number one, a communion set, number two, a token receptacle, number three, communion token set, communion, to that's four, communion token mold, five, baptismal bowl, six, number seven, communion silver and plate, and number eight, collecting ladle, communion flagon from 1714, and a chalice or communion cup, 1707. So I'll, I'll, go f I'll fly through those, what do I see? Where's number one? Not oh there. Don't see number one. Ah, there's number one. There's a pitch pipe. We used it in worship. My goodness. Presenter led the praise, sounded the note on the pitch pipe or tuning fork. I've never seen one of these pitch pipes. I've seen a tuning fork before. And that's your communion. Uh, set and this is your collection these are communion tokens these are communion stamp this is a communion ladle uh, collection plate I presume another way of collecting is a ladle here and this is a communion flagon Irish Presbyterians were frequently involved in controversy with Anglicans over church government, worship and marriages. From, for much of the 18th century, Presbyterians were barred from certain civic offices and resented paying tithes to the established Church of Ireland. And if you look at the 1798 rebellion, you will find that many of the rebellion leaders were Presbyterians. Um, Henry Joy McCracken, uh, uh, Mary Ann McCracken and, and um, you know all of these folks and many of them were hanged because they rebelled against the crown and many of them were the sons and daughters of uh, Presbyterian ministers or indeed they were Presbyterian ministers themselves. So we've got Henry Joy McCracken Now these were to a large degree, non-subscribing Presbyterians. Crossroads Presbyterian Church Donegal, a secession church built in 1783. These were the seceders. So they're different groupings. Uh, symbol of non-subscribing Presbyterians. The latest Irish Presbyterian hymn book was published in 2004. New contemporary songs of worship continue to take their place alongside the classical traditions. Psalms and hymns. Last years of the 19th century were dominated by disagreements over the use of organs and hymns in public worship. So the Reformed Presbyterians, they don't use uh, any uh, musical instrument in their worship and they only sing psalms. So they're separate again. So there's three different uh, types of Presbyterians. Uh, 
uh, church debate in the 20th century, the church debated a series of controversial subjects including, including Irish Home Rule, Heresy War, Northern Ireland, the Troubles, the Ordination of Women, membership of the World Council of Churches and Freemasonry. So those have been the, the uh, main issue. Uh, in the 21st century, the main issues um, are talking about the role of human intervention. So you're talking about your abortion and euthanasia, and we're talking about same-sex attraction there. And meeting houses. So these are the different uh, types of churches, um, what, what they would look like. Many meeting houses were barn churches. This is First Billy's Bur Burrow Presbyterian Church, County Cavan. Barn churches, a particular construction. Uh, often substantial buildings, some two-storey with a simple roof and almost no ornamentation. The pulpit was often quite high with the sounding board for acoustics was positioned in the middle of a long wall. Beneath the pulpit was the presenters desk and a pew box for uh, gathering elders. So you can read the rest of that for yourself. Akadui, Presbyterian Church County, London there. White walls, blue slates. Bally Cali Presbyterian Church. So you see the different styles of churches. Gallery churches began to make their appearance from 1820 onwards. Growing congregations and developing architecture. Uh, more prosperous, they got more uh, uh, dissatisfied with the simpler buildings. Larger, there's a Gothic revival church with high pitched roofs, lofty spires, blah blah blah. I wonder where that is. That's First Derry Presbyterian Church. And it's almost like a, a, a facade of a classical or Greek Roman temple. This is First Armagh Presbyterian Church. And uh, you, would, you would mistake that for a Church of Ireland church. Following the destruction of many churches during the Second World War, numerous churches were built. And some of the uh, churches are quite, uh, quite modern. This is First Garva Presbyterian Church Garva. I found it quite amusing that um, one of the uh, latest books to be written about the Presbyterian influence on Belfast and the founding of Belfast, that book has been written by Tom Hartley of Sinn Féin, would you believe? <laughs> oh dear, oh. oh Tom Hartley, he's uh, very much a historian and he has written a book about the founding fathers of Belfast who were uh, Presbyterians and I would encourage you to go out or go on Amazon and buy that book. And as I always say, come down and check it out for yourself.